In this lesson, we're going to be looking at line graphs. We're going to look at some information and talk about how to graph it. And then we're going to look at interpreting the uh, results on a line graph. So if you're taking notes, um, you will look at this right here. We have the following high and low temperatures were recorded over a six-day period in New York City. Notice that this information is going to include both high temperatures and low temperatures. And then it lists the high and low temperature for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And it says to create a double bar graph. The reason that this one is a double bar graph is because we are graphing two different bits of information. We're going to have one graph for the high temperatures and one graph for the low temperatures. So first of all, let's think about what a line graph is used for. A line graph is usually used uh, to represent increases and decreases that are seen over a period of time. The time could be days of the week, it could be over years, it could be over months, but typically this is when we use a line graph is when we're watching things over a period of time. Now the first thing we want to do is think about giving our graph an appropriate title. We want the title to be representative of what the information is going to be so if someone were to look at our graph they would know exactly what we're being the information is representing if that made sense so since this is the high and low temperatures in New York City over a period of time I labeled mine high and low temperatures in New York City the next thing you need to do in creating a graph is to label the two axes. We have the x-axis down here. On the x-axis, we're always going to put, since this is a line graph and we're representing time, whatever time frame there is, whether it's days of the week or months or years, that's going to go on the x-axis. And we look at the information given to us. We have days of the week, Monday through Saturday. So it would make sense for us to label the x-axis days of the week. And for the y-axis, we have to have the numbers, and so that's going to be the temperature and degrees in Fahrenheit. So notice down here on the x-axis, I went ahead and labeled each line Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, because that is information that we are graphing. The y-axis is going to be the degrees in Fahrenheit. And I look up here, and I just look to see what kind of range that we need to cover. It looks like the highest temperature is 80 degrees. And typically, we start on zero if we can. So if I want this graph to go from zero to 80, I'm probably going to have to go by tens. So that's how I labeled my graph, starting at zero. And each line is worth 10 degrees. Now we have a title. We've labeled our axis, and we've decided um, how we're going to do our scale right here. We decided to do it by tens. Now we're ready to graph the information. Since this is a double bar graph, we have to decide how we're going to represent each of the bits of information differently. And so I'm going to represent the high temperature with a solid red line, and I'm going to represent the low temperatures with a dashed black line, just so that they are differentiated between on the graph. Now we're ready to just start plotting points. So we know on Monday the uh, low temperature, I'm going to do the lows first, was 43 degrees. So on Monday we put a point at 43 degrees as you can see right here. On Tuesday the low was 53 degrees so we put approximately 53 degrees and then we do 50 degrees, 57 degrees, 59 degrees, and 43 degrees. So you will see here I put a point on each of those places. Now it's a line graph so now I have to draw the line. And I've decided to represent the low temperatures with a black dashed line and so I'm going to connect each of the dots with a dashed black line like this. Now for the high temperatures I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to plot each of the points it was 58 degrees on Monday, 68 degrees on Tuesday, 71 degrees on Wednesday, 80 degrees on Thursday, 59 degrees on Friday, and 43 degrees on Saturday. I decided to represent my high temperatures with a solid red line, so now I'm going to connect those lines with my solid high line, solid red line.
The thing about a line graph is it's just discipline information. If I were to give you this information, it was all written like it is up here. You got a bunch of stuff just kind of scattered. You've got numbers and cities and days of the week, and it gets kind of confusing. But when you present this in a line graph like this, now you can look at this graph, and you can easily tell whether if there's an increase in temperature, if there's a decrease in temperature, how the highs and lows compared. It's so much easier to compare and look at these things when it's represented on a graph instead of just in a paragraph form. So now let's look at how we can interpret some of this information. What is the mean? high temperature. Mean means average and if you remember to find the average of numbers we add together all of those numbers and divide by how many numbers there are. So we had one, two, three, four, five, six, six days of the week. So we're going to add together all of those high temperatures. So that would be 58 and 68 and 71 and 80 and 65 and 58. We're going to add those together and once we get that total we're going to divide by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 numbers. So we're going to divide that number by 6. When we do that we find that the average temperature was 67 degrees. What was the average or the mean low temperature? We do the same thing. We look at the low temperatures. We're going to add them together and divide by 6. So our low temperatures were 43 and 53 and 50, 57, 59, and 43. So to find the mean or the average, we add that together and we divide by 6. And when we do that, we find out that the average low temperature was 51. How would you describe the high temperature trend for the week? It is much easier to tell the trend for the week by looking at a line graph instead of just looking at all this writing up here. If you look at the line graph and you're looking for the trend for the high temperatures, that means we're just looking at the red line up here, what would the trend be? Well, I see that it's increasing Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, so the first part of the week it was increasing. And starting Wednesday to Thursday and Friday and Saturday, or increased to Thursday, I'm sorry, all the way to Thursday it was increasing. And starting with Thursday it began to decrease. So to describe that with words I could simply say the temperature increased the first part of the week and decreased after Wednesday. That actually should say Thursday. So it's just a general trend of what's going on. When did New York City experience the greatest high temperature decrease from the day before? So a decrease is getting less. We only see two periods of time that that happened. Between Thursday and Friday, we see a decrease here. And between Friday and Saturday, we see a decrease here. And you can tell by looking at the graph which one of those is the greatest. It's the one that has the steepest line. And that would be between Thursday and Friday. So you can tell by looking at the graph which one had the greatest decrease. So that hopefully will give you some ideas about how to make line graphs and the kind of information that we can gather from it.